Hi everybody, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I Tonight I'm going to paint on a Pilsner glass. I'm going to do the daffodil design, the hand-painted daffodil design that I did um, a test run with uh, doing the brush strokes the other night, the sample I did on wax paper. Now my design will be something similar, but I found that the way I did the design on the wax paper doesn't actually fit very well on the glass. So it will be a little bit different on the glass because it doesn't all fit on there nicely like I had hoped. Now tonight I'm using the same colors, the Thicket, the Sunflower Yellow, which are the two colors I'm using right at the moment. Just trying to do the first stem. And then I also will be using Yellow Ochre and I will be using um, the sunflower along with the yellow ochre for the petals of the flower and then I'm going to throw in a multi-surface uh, daffodil yellow along with wicker white for the center of the flowers. Okay, so here goes. I am, like I said, going to have to do this a little bit differently than what I had done on my on the wax paper because I found that Trying to do it, what, what I was doing just didn't flow nicely and it kept run, it ran into the other parts of my design. So didn't have enough room for it all. Right now, again, I am just painting the stems of the flower. And then I'm going to put the leaves in. And like I said, I'm trying very hard to arrange this so that we don't run into each other. So I wanted to make sense on the glass. And you might find this too. You know, you have a different surface, a different amount of room to paint. So you may find that it isn't going to fit exactly how you did it. Maybe when you do like a practice run. And as far as the branches go, um, you can make them, you know, thinner, thicker. You know, that's up to you. And, it, and I also have to apologize, I still am trying to get used to my setup here because I have my camera now mounted above me, so it's hard for me to tell. A lot of times I'm hoping that I'm in the space where you can see everything I'm doing. I apologize if I'm not. That's not my intention. Now, keep in mind, um, I do like to remind people every time I do a video, if I remember, that you always place painted glass in a cold oven. Preheat your oven once the glass is inside. This will allow for the glass um, to change temperatures slowly as opposed to you placing it into a warm oven. And that's very important because that's what will cause your glass to break is if there's a sudden change in temperature, whether it's going from hot to cold or vice versa. As far as your heat time, I then add my preheat time to my bake time. So I know with the Folk Art Enamels, they recommend 30 minutes at 350 degrees. So my... Uh, preheat time on my oven that I bake my glass in is actually um, 20 minutes. So that would be a total of 50 minutes in bake time. Once you turn off the oven, allow the glass just to remain in there until your oven is cold. Then feel free to remove your, your baked glass and continue on whether you're uh, going to coat it with something, uh, the flow medium, or, or clear medium, I should say, not the flow medium. Or if you're going to maybe do, because there's decoupage for glass now, and that actually gives it a very uh, nice, durable finish if you decide to go that route. And um, I, like I said, you don't have to with these glass paints. The thicker you place the paint on, the more durable the paint is, but then you also have to be cautious that you don't pick it, put it on too th thickly, or you could have bubbling uh, when you bake it. 
And that's not so pretty, especially when you've worked really hard on a design and you pull it out and it's got these nice little bubbles in it. And you think, oh no, because they're really not a whole lot you can do with them that I found at least. I mean, I just, it's very disappointing when that happens and I have had it happen. And depending on the type of design, this paint does air cure within uh, 21 days. Now, I'll have to say that doesn't mean that you cannot use your gloss. Some people may disagree. It does dry. It curing means that it's fully, uh, fully dried, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. Um, yeah, because it'll definitely be dried to the touch way, 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 way before 21 days. But you might just want to hand wash it. And the thing of it is, really, with painted glass, if you want it to last longer, you might just want to do that anyways. Um, just so that, that it doesn't, you know, the design doesn't come off as easily or the wear of being washed. Now, because I am doing the design a little bit differently, I may go ahead and, and add just a few more petals in here, uh, leaf petals, just so that it's not plain at the bottom. Gives it a little bit more interest to have the gloss, you know, full around the bottom here. And you could actually do a different style of leaf. You know, you don't have to do all the same leaves. Or just for the sake of the video, I'm just going to keep it simple and try to get through it quickly. Don't want to bore you, bore you too much here. I don't want to bore you at all, but I know I get a little impatient sometimes. All right, so I have this part done. What I'm going to do is hit it with a blow dryer and then come back and paint the flower petals. All right, so now I'm going to start my my main petal, my main flower. And as I've mentioned before in my previous video, for some reason when I'm doing flowers, I have a tendency to start with the first petal at the top. Probably should be off a little bit, but I don't know. I kind of like it this way. But whatever your preference is, go for it. And I'm just trying to attempt to make it look a little bit more opaque. That's why I'm going over it and then try to cover up the actual green underneath a little bit more. I mean, if it shows through some, it's fine. And maybe for you, you don't it, you don't mind it. It's it's you know really a matter of preference. Moving on to the second petal. And like I did in the other, you can actually wiggle your brush a little bit to maybe give it more of a, instead of a straight edge, give it more of a little bit of a wavy, wavier edge to the petal. I'm going to keep turning it. It's only nice about painting on glass. It's kind of fun to paint on stuff that you can actually just turn it as you're painting on it instead of it being uh, maybe in a... Um, I'm losing my... I'm losing my... Uh, not losing my thought process, but losing my wording. Something that's actually, you know, fastened or a permanent fixture 
like a wall. And I've done a lot of painting on walls. And uh, yeah, you don't move those if you got if you're gonna paint on them and you need to paint something. You really have to be able to paint in all directions when you're doing that. One thing too, and uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I've mentioned this already, is make sure that you do clean your glass before you paint it. Um, one good way to do it too is to, to rub um, denatured alcohol on it to make sure that you get all the, you know, any kind of uh, dust, oil from your fingers, anything like that, so that the, the paint will adhere properly to your, to your, your uh, glass. And that gives it the best best opportunity to adhere is to have a clean glass to start with. And this is kind of a fun design to paint. I don't know for some reason I t I need to come up with some more designs for my the paintings on my hangers. And doing the hand painted glass, and it gives me ideas. And designs and some practice. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. You know, I don't want to just be stuck with one one design, but I have a tendency to be that way for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. Okay, now I'm going to do this little this little one over here, which is going to be more of a, the other two are going to be more of just like bud. Uh, you know, not completely open flowers. If you haven't already subscribed to my videos, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Feel free to share them, which I would love, and like them. And, uh, And definitely come back for more. I would appreciate it. All right, and then the next one I will continue on with actually doing the daffodil yellow and the white first. Sometimes you have to do different parts you know, kind of, not necessarily build on it per se, but do different parts in order to complete the flower in the right, the right manner. Meaning that some, some parts come before the, before you add another part, makes it look nicer. And so for some reason tonight, when I'm trying to do these white and these petals, you seem to not want to show white very much. I'm not really sure what the deal is. And these I'm just kind of pressing and just kind of wiggle my brush a little bit. Now well, that's got too much brown on the tip. I want some brown in it. I'm sorry, I think I'm getting off the camera. I'm trying very hard to stay on camera. Again, I apologize if I'm floating off for some reason. Not trying to, but it's really hard for me to tell. Very hard for me to tell. Now too, I did not dry my flower petals before continuing on with this. You're more than you know welcome to do that if you feel the need um, to allow them to dry a little bit more before you're you're actually painting, kind of painting over them like I'm doing. I feel like I keep floating off the camera tonight. I'm sorry. Uh, 
All right, so I have that done. And see, I just put a little bit of brown on the brush too, so that I was automatically getting some more, actually more brown than just the strict yellow on it, if that makes sense, because I have that bright yellow that I'm using. Okay, so then I'm going to come back over here to this flower, and like I said, part of this is not dry, as you can see. So I could have hit that with a blow dryer too. But for the purpose of the video, you know, it's fine. I am using a flat brush. It's a glass, um, actually one stroke brush which I love the one stroke brushes even if you're not doing one stroke because they're very durable brushes. They have a tendency to last for a very long time. Very good product. The reason I'm going back over is trying to get a little bit more white in there. Like I said, you can go back over and kind of brush it up if you want. Some of the, the brown if you wanted to do that with a liner brush, you know, you could by all means do that. Um, let's see, my next step is going to be to come back in with the brown here, finish this flower. This is what I mean is I ended up having, like on these I painted the, the yellow ochre first and then put the little center in. This one I put the center in first, and then I'm going to go back in with the outer petals. And put those in next. to come back through and finish up the green. And by that I mean, you know, like putting the um, ends on here. Like you're connecting, connecting the flower to the, to the stem. I think just some more interest you can do that. Alright, and then I'm going to come back over here to this one. And even though I'm not really seeing exactly where it connects, I'm just going to get a little bit more interest on the stem itself. Just fine. Guess that when these dry, you can always come back in. Just leave it alone, or you can add add to it, and that will add a little bit more to your paint being opaque instead of um, clear or transparent. That one, I'm not doing anything to it. I said you can come back into your petals if you want to maybe make more contrast. And there are different ways to do petals too. I mean, these just happen to be, you know, just some easy petals that I am used to doing. Like I said, they don't all have to be the same kind of petals either. You know, or you can do some with shading. Uh, you know figure out where your, your sunlight would be coming from and, and add shading in based on that. A little bit more interest. 
And if you wanted to do something to finish up the bar on the bottom, you could do maybe even take a um, a tip of your of your uh, paint bottle and put one of those tips on it and make a design. Even make uh, dots or something around the bottom if you wish to do so. But there you have it. I'm going to leave it as as it is and it's ready to go. Alright, thanks again for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please don't do so now. Like it and share it. I would appreciate it. And I uh, will see you the next time. Thanks again. Have a good evening.